Hello guys, Ali Reza here and welcome back to another video. In this one we are going to look at how we can create this simple damage indicator system for our first person character. As you can see when I get hit by this rotating box here, the indicator pops up and shows me that my character is being hit. So let's jump right in and see how we can set this system up. What we need to do here is to just import a PNG file and then add it to the viewport when our character is hit by something. So let's create a widget blueprint, name it damage indicator and open it up. Here just search for canvas and drag it in. Let's put it on, for example, 1920 by 1080 and then add an image. Anchor the pin like this and zero out all these values so it covers the canvas. And now we are going to assign the image to this section here. So control and space to open up the content browser and then drag your PNG into this box. Now we need an event to add this to our viewport. For example, we can create an obstacle and when our character hits it, uh, it can damage our character and then we can add this to our viewport. So let's create another blueprint, actor and name it uh, obstacle, for example. Then I'm going to add a cube and then scale it like this and then add a box collision. Match the box collision with the cube so when our character hits this actually hits the box collision and we can use the events in the event graph. Alright, now here we can use the box collision and for example uh, go with on components begin overlap. Then cast to our first person character. I'll connect this to the object and now for example let's add the print string function. And then when our character collides with this, the function gets called. You can see that when we go here the function gets called but when we go here it doesn't. The reason is that our box collision is not set properly. So go back here and uh, make it a little bigger so it covers the whole area. Now we need to make it rotate. So here just uh, add a rotating movement and it makes it rotate around itself and then instead of print string we need to create a widget. So search for create widget and then add to viewport. Connect the return value to the target and also choose the widget blueprint we made. Compile and play and now you can see that when we collide with the obstacle we have the widget blueprint on our screen. The thing here is that uh, when it's added to the viewport, it does not get removed. So we need to do something about that as well. We want to remove it with a fading effect. So let's go back to the widget blueprint and here create an animation for this image. Uh, if you don't have this animation tab here, just uh, select this button and you will have it right there. Okay, now uh, select this image, hit animation and create a new animation. Let's name it fade and select it, hit track and select the image. Now we are able to create a fading animation for this image using this opacity value here. We want it to go from 1 to 0. So let's add a key when it's on 0 and then after 1 second we want it to go to 0. So add the key again and here we have this animation. This value is the opacity of the image and it goes from 1 
to zero after a second. Now in order to utilize this animation, just go to the graph and then create a custom event. Right click, search for custom event. And for example, let's name it play fading. Then we want to play the animation that we made. So here add the play animation function and then drag the animation into this event graph and plug it in. All right, now go back to the obstacle blueprint and here call the custom event that we made. Just uh, drag a wire and search for play fading. If it can't find uh, the event that you made, just disable this context sensitive option and it can't find it here. So add it to the event graph and also connect the return value to the target and that's it. Now compile and play. And as you can see, it goes away after one second. Yeah, that's it guys. And this is how easy it is to add a damage indicator for your first person character. Of course, you can use the same system for the third person character and it will work as well. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you later.